examples we shall take up today. So what we have done is, uh, uh, let us say that uh, V over F is a finite dimensional vector space and let us say it's a uh, dimension B N, say finite. You need not write two times F. And uh, T be a linear transformation, that means so is an element of AFV. Then uh, we know that, uh, then, and also let us take uh, B be an ordered basis. And uh, say and let us take B, say V one, V two, V n. Here B an ordered basis. or V over F. All right, then uh, there exists a matrix. We can prove that this is unique. Say A in M and F. such that the matrix of T with respect to this ordered basis B is A. If uh, A is, uh, say, having entries alpha IJ, then uh, what we know here, because of the isomorphism of uh, AFV onto M and F. There exists, uh, no, this uh, A is unique by the way, you can prove that also. Then uh, there exists uh, here these alpha IJs. And uh, this uh, VIT is uh, here alpha IJ j is equal to 1 to n and v j this is same as alpha i1 v1 alpha i2 v2 alpha i n v n for every i 1 to 2 n so then these alpha ages are unique. And uh, alpha ages are unique and are such that this. So this gives the ith row. And if you vary i one to n, you get all the n rows. And naturally, then this a therefore would look like as we know, n. So this will be alpha i one, alpha i two, alpha i n. This is the i -th. And This is somewhere here is alpha i j. That is on the intersection of i -th row and j -th column. Okay. So this is what it is, your i -th row. Uh, on the other hand, if you have the matrix, uh, then you can also find out the corresponding linear transformation. Also, if A here is a matrix, 
say alpha i j n by n in m then it can be treated was treated here means isomorphic to a linear transformation a linear transformation t in a v or some vector space v over f such that the matrix of t with respect to an ordered basis b is actually a and for this so uh, what we know you can take for example v to the f n over f and b to be the standard basis for v over f that means if b is denoted by v1 v2 and say vn then vi is actually an antiple 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 n total there is a 1 by n and this appears at the ith position and this happens for every i 1 to n and the map uh, this uh, t and t therefore can be v is equal to fn over f to fn over f and this uh, v if you take here let us take x1 x2 and say xn then this vt can be considered as so as the product here va so va now this va here means as the product of this one by n one by n and this is simply you can write this so x1 n by n. so when you multiply this by the first column then this will be like that so x1 then you have alpha 1 1 x2 alpha 2 1 and x n alpha n 1 that will be the first coordinate so this will be first coordinate will be x 1 alpha 1 1 x 2 alpha 2 1 plus and this is x n alpha n 1 and the second likewise will be x 1 alpha 1 2 x2 alpha 2 2 and like that here x n alpha n and 2 alpha n 2 like that so the last two will be of course x1 alpha 1 n x2 alpha n2 and like this x n alpha n n this will be the n double now in particular you can see here how the basis vectors are mapped so this will give you vt and the matrix of t with respect to the ordered basis will turn out to be alpha ij so if this is the case so observe here that so you can straight away define you need not write this va this is just to write this expression so if you see here so if you take this as say for example v1t so v1t so v1t means here alpha 1 1 is v1t 
So this is 1, 0, 0, 0. X1 is 1. This X1 is 1. And all other XIs are 0 for every i greater than 1. So what will happen? So only this term will appear where x1 is there and all others will be 0. So this will be the end double. Now here x1 is 1 and this is alpha 1 1. That's all. So the first coordinate will be alpha 1 1. Second coordinate will come from here. x1 is 1 and this is alpha 1 2. And like that this n will be alpha 1n because x1 is 1. This is this. And likewise, and likewise others. So this is the first row, and this gives you the first row. So you can see that the matrix of T with respect to this ordered basis B, the standard ordered basis B, is actually the matrix A. This is the first row of A. So we can do using the, the expression for T, writing the matrix of T with respect to an ordered basis B. Conversely, if there is a matrix A given in MNF, that means N by N matrix with entries from F, you can find out the linear transformation T over a vector space V over F or some vector space V which you can take easily as Fn over F and the standard basis as the standard ordered basis. And this uh, you will find that the matrix of T with respect to this ordered basis is same as A. So both because of this one-to-one uh, -one correspondence, we can use either way writing T as the linear transformation or manipulating with the corresponding matrix. Since the matrices so we have been doing since long right from schools, so we are more comfortable with the matrices. So many of the things henceforth we shall be dealing with the matrices, but before that we also have to derive something more important. Now let us uh, have, uh, we already had seen what happens uh, to the change of basis. Further, we also had seen that if uh, we change the ordered basis uh, B1 to B2 for the vector space V over F, then what happens? So let uh, the dimension of V over F be N, and b1 b2 b2 ordered basis for v over f if for t is a linear transformation here such that the matrix of T with respect to the ordered basis B1 is A and a matrix of T with respect to the ordered basis D2 is B, then what we know that there exists a matrix C here in MNF. By the way, this A, B, C all are in MNF and this is regular such that C can be written as CAC inverse. And we know what is this C, where what is C? C is the matrix of S. And S is what? S is the linear transformation V to V, which maps in order the vectors vi to vis to wi 
for very i equal to n where we know that b1 is b1 into n and b2 is w1 into w n so this uh, is the linear transformation here and this is regular because it maps basis onto basis and this is the matrix. Uh, you can also write or that B is equal to C inverse inverse A C inverse. So what you get here is, so the C inverse is actually is the matrix of S inverse. You can see that this is with respect to the ordered basis B1. And with respect to the ordered basis B1. Or if you want, you can call this as the P inverse AP, where this P is this. So uh, this, uh, that is, we have called that similar. That is, B is similar to A. And uh, the C or uh, C inverse uh, is called the matrix of the change of basis or transition matrix. These are two different names available in the literature. Okay, now with all this uh, in mind, now we shall have some examples. Uh, we already had examples uh, where we have obtained uh, the matrices of a linear transformation, namely, for example, the derivative on the vector space of polynomials. Of finite degree with different bases and writing corresponding matrices and also obtaining the relations with B is as C A C inverse. Now let me have uh, one more example for that. So, so once again, uh, let us take uh, this is an example. So let V be Fx and uh, this is a VB V3. So this is uh, uh, here the polynomial. So well, you can take real polynomials if you want. So let us take polynomials Fx in Fx. Such that degree of this uh, polynomial uh, degree fx plus or equal to three and take f to the r. Okay, so real polynomials and define the linear transformation t. Can prove that this is a linear transformation. So T from uh, say V to V. So suppose Fx is uh, say alpha naught plus alpha 1x alpha 2x square plus alpha 2 3. It should be written a little way. So this is, uh, this is, let us say V. So VT is here. So this is alpha naught plus alpha one, one plus X plus alpha two, one plus X square plus alpha three, one plus X cube. Suppose this. Now you can prove that this is a linear transformation. Then uh, 
T is a linear transformation. This is for you to prove. And B1, if you take, say, 1 x, x square x cube, and B2, let us take is 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus x square, 1 plus x cube, are two bases. Or B over F. And also that the dimension of V over F is 4. Clearly. So this is for you to prove all these things. Now, we want to write uh, the matrix of uh, T with respect to the ordered basis B1. So, if uh, A is the matrix of T with respect to the ordered basis B1, B1 is now ordered, and uh, B is the matrix of T with respect to the ordered basis B2, so, also now treated as ordinary basis. Then there exists a matrix C in M and F. And is here 4 and 4 F such that B is C is inverse. So we shall now find out. So find out this A, B, C. So find A, B and C. C in matrices. So this is what is the example that we are now doing. Okay. So to write the matrix so here, so to write matrix of T with respect to the ordered basis B1, we need to know the images under T of the basis vectors. So we need to know V I T. V I T. For I, one, two, three, and four, as a linear combination of V J's. That's what. Now for this, now observe that. V1 T, 1, V1 is what? 1, V1 T. This is alpha naught. So this is 1. That's all. This one is V1. This is 1 V1, 0 V2, 0 V3, 0 V4. That's alpha. V2 T. V2 is 1 plus X. No, sorry, X only. This is so V2. X, X of T. X of T, so this is alpha 1 X, and alpha 1 is 1. All other alphas are 0, so this goes to 1 into 1 plus X. So this is 1 plus X. 1 plus X is V1 plus V2. So this is 1 V1 plus 1 V2. 0 V2, 0 V4. V3 T, V3 T, so this is X square T. Now this is the square of 1 plus X. 
This is what? 1 plus 2x plus x square. This is what is this? So, this v2, v3 t. So, this v3 t is therefore, this can be written as, okay. So, 1 v1, 2 v2, plus 1 v3, 0 v4. Finally, v4 t, this will x cube t, will 1 plus x cube. So, this is 1 plus 3x plus 3x square plus x cube. And that means that this is 1v1 plus 3v2, 3v3 plus 1v4. And that gives me the matrix A, the matrix of T with respect to the ordered basis B1 as, so it's 4 by 4. First uh, row obviously is, you can see 1, 0, 0, 0. This is 1, 0, 0, 0. Second comes from here, V2, T. So 1, 1, 0, 0. So 1, 1, 0, 0. Third comes from this V3T. So this is 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 0. And finally, the last row, that is fourth row, comes from the last equation, that is 1, 3, 3, and then 1. So this is what is the matrix here. Size is 4 by 4. Good. So we have got A. Now let me find out B. So to know B, therefore, now for B, B is what? TB2. We need to know WIT as a linear combination of WJs for every I, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now observe again that W1T. W1T. What is W1? So W1 is 1. This is 1T. And T, so this is 1 only. This is again W1. And W1 is 1, W1, 0, W2, 0, W3, and 0, W4. W2, T. What is W2? W2 is 1 plus X. 1 plus X of T. Now, what T is doing? See carefully. What T was doing? T was sending here the polynomial alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 3 x square plus alpha 3 x cube to the polynomial alpha naught plus alpha 1 1 plus x plus alpha 2 1 plus x whole square plus alpha 3 1 plus x cube. And therefore, this 1 plus x, this is the polynomial alpha naught plus alpha 1 x. And this will be sent to, therefore, so 1 plus 1 plus x. So this is 1 plus 1 plus x. This. Now, we need to write this as the linear combination of Ws. So, 1 is W1. So, this is 1, W1. And this 1 plus x is W2. So, 1, W2, 0, W3, 0, W4. W3, T. W3 is 1 plus x square. And T of this 
So that goes to 1 plus 1 into and 1 plus x whole squared. And now you have to see that carefully. So this is 1 plus, and this is 1 plus 2x plus x squared. I have to write this as the linear combination of w's. So this is uh, now you can see here. So this can be seen as this is uh, you have you see that this is so this is uh, your uh, w three t. So this can be written as so you have to write this as the linear combination of one. 1 plus x, 1 plus x square, 1 plus x cube, and like that. So this can be written as, so you can see minus 1 into 1, plus 2 into 1 plus x, plus 1 into 1 plus x square. You can see, this is 2 plus 2x, fine. This is actually 2 plus 2x, good. But then you have, if you write this, so 1 plus x square times 1, so this one will come, so that has to be subtracted. So this uh, gives me, and this is minus 1, is the coefficient of w1 plus 2w2 plus 1 into w3 plus 0 w4 w4 t is 1 plus x cube t t sends now this to 1 plus 1 plus x whole cube now this is 1 plus and this is 1 plus 3x plus 3x square as x cube. Now let me write this as the linear combination of 1 plus x and 1 plus x square and 1 plus x cube. So you will have to adjust the terms. 1 plus x cube is straight away here. So this you can write as 1 plus x cube. So 1 plus x cube is here. Now what remained now is 1 plus 3x plus 3x square. Now, this is 3x squared, so I need to have the coefficient here of 1 plus x squared also as 3. But because of this, uh, what we shall have 3 plus 3x squared, but then we will come to this one. So, minus 2 already there. So, and I also have to have here this 3 as 1 plus x. Now, I have to adjust the constants, so you can see how many are there here. This is uh, 2 with positive sign. And here we have 3 plus 3, 6 plus 1, that is 7. So I must take away 5. So minus 5 into 1. This is what it is. So you can see that this is minus 5 w1 plus 3 w2 plus 3 w3 plus 1 w4. As the matrix of uh, this uh, TV2. You know? And so the matrix uh, TV2 is the matrix uh, B can be written as. So let me write on the other page. So the matrix of T with respect to the order base in T2 is B. So we change the page, but the matrix I can tell you here itself. So, first row will be 1, 0, 0, 0. Second row will be 1, 1, 0, 0. Third row will be from here, W3T, minus 1, 2, 1, and 0. Finally, the last row will be minus 5, 3, 3, and 1. So, what I have got here is that this is T, that is TB2. This is the matrix here. You can see 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, 
minus 5, 3, 3, and 1. This is what is your B. All right. And uh, you can now see what is uh, C actually. So C is also to be C here. And uh, recall A also here. So call A. A was also 4 by 4. And what was A? So this was 1. And then 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0. 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, and 1, 3, 3, 1. This was also 4 by 4. This is what we had already obtained. Now, let us take uh, S to be in uh, AFV defined by on the basis vectors. So, VIS is WI for every i, 1 to 4. That means V1S is W1. And what does it give me? I want to write the matrix C. What is C? C is the matrix of S with respect to the basis V1. So I need to write V1S, which is W1 the linear combination of Vx. Now W1 is 1, which is same as V1. So this is 1 V1, 0 V2, 0 V3, 0 V4. V2S is W2. Plus W2, 1 plus X. 1 plus X is what? V1 plus V2. Plus V2. This is 1v1, 1v2, and 0v3, 0v4. V3s is w3. What is w3? 1 plus x square. And what is this? This is v1. plus V3. This is 1V1, 0V2, 1V3, 0V4. Finally, V4S is W4. W4 is 1 plus X cube. Well, this is V1 plus V4. 1V1, 0V2, 0V3, 1v4 and uh, this gives this uh, as the matrix of S or you can call it C. Uh, so. and C the matrix of S with respect to the order is B1S. So this also is 4 by 4. Entries now V1S will give the first row that will be 1, 0, 0, 0. Second row from V2S is 1, 1, 0, 0. Third row from V2S we get is 1, 0, 1, 0. Finally, the last fourth row is 1, 0, 0, and, and 1. You can now. Uh, Prove that this is an invertible matrix, and you can verify now. This is for you that V is C A C inverse. All right. So what we have got here is yet one more example of a vector space and a linear transformation and the change of basis. Uh, so like that, there can be other examples also. Our main interest, therefore, is in knowing whether 
So this uh, B is similar to A. That's what it was. Whether a given matrix is similar to an interesting matrix or not. So this is what is the object. What are the beautiful matrices that you can easily recognize? The easily recognizable matrices are naturally when all entries are zero, that is a null matrix or zero matrix. You can also see that if on the diagonal all entries are equal and equal to one, then also the beautiful matrix called identity matrix. So is a given matrix similar to identity matrix? We can also be happy if uh, it is a diagonal matrix, but with all entries equal and equal to say alpha. Alpha is a scalar. That means the scalar matrix is a given matrix similar to the scalar matrix. Remember all the statements that I am making can be made equivalently for any linear transformation also over a finite dimensional vector space. But likewise, if we do not have uh, all entries on the diagonal equal, but we have say lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n on the diagonal and all rest are zeros. That means the question again is a given matrix similar to a diagonal matrix. And in that case, we say can matrix be diagonalized? Two things, yes or no. If it is no, good, nice. Only thing you have to justify why no. The second thing is if you say yes, then again you have to justify. And not only justify, you also have to obtain the matrix of P such that P inverse AP is a diagonal matrix and or that you can say this can be diagonalized and diagonalized to which particular matrix. That means finding out this diagonal matrix as well. So we would like to wind up here, but before that, let me just have one simple example and we shall then wind up. So one more example only we shall be doing. So let us have this example. This is an interesting example. This is another example. So is the matrix so A one one zero one and to R diagonalizing. That is, does there exist does there exist uh, an invertible matrix 
let us say P or C, what are you going to look out? P inverse A. Let us say C then M to R such that CAC inverse is a diagonal matrix. Is a diagonal matrix. That is of the form A, 0, 0, and this is C. This is the question. So one simple thing is that you can assume that suppose that is the case. So for uh, suppose uh, such a C exists. All right. And uh, we can also take this uh, C to be, let us take C to be X, Y, Z and W. Nice. So what we have here is that CAC inverse is, let us take is of the form. So instead of taking this or AB, let me take alpha beta. Alpha beta. And let us take this is alpha beta. So this is the case. So what you can uh, uh, see if this is C. So observe that uh, you can write the uh, inverse of this uh, C inverse. So this is x, y, z, w. Inverse is 1 by x w minus y z and here w minus y and minus z and x x and w interest in y and z are replaced by this so this exists provided this is not zero x w minus y z is not zero since C inverse uh, exists, we have assumed, since we have assumed that C inverse exists, we assume that X W minus Y Z is different from zero. Um, now you can just multiplying uh, everything what you get. So this is what you can see. So writing the expressions uh, for uh, this. Uh, so writing. For expressions for this. Uh, a, B, and C, we should have C, A, C inverse uh, to be this. C, A, C inverse to be equal to, say, here this matrix B, and B is the diagonal. Alpha zero and that turns out to be so this is X, Y, Z, W, A is one, one, zero, one. Then here we have inverse of that X, Y, Z, W inverse equal to alpha zero zero beta. 
So this is same, eh? x, y, radical w, 1, 1, 0, 1. And then you have here 1 by x, w, minus y, z. And you can now see this is w and x and minus y, z. Beta. You can see now this is for you to verify that this is same as x w minus y z. This matrix is x w minus x z minus y z x square minus z square. And this entry here is x z minus y z plus x w. Alpha zero and this is for you to verify. Eh? Now this uh, will give you here that x square must be zero. x square, those two matrices are equal if the corresponding entries are equal. So that gives uh, x square is 0. So that makes x is 0. And likewise, your minus z square is also 0. That makes z is also 0. But uh, if uh, that is the case, then these two will imply uh, but then x w minus y z will be zero because x is zero as well as x. Now this is a contradiction to the elution. And this is uh, not diagonalizing. All right, but uh, this we could do because uh, this uh, matrix so uh, A is a small matrix because its uh, size is just two by two only. And uh, we could uh, go like that. But if the size is little bigger, you can see that even if it is, uh, say, 3 by 3, then also the expressions will become flimsy. But still, you can do that. So just for an R and we have this shape, A was also nicer for easily multiply. So this uh, way of uh, determining may be a little clumsy, tedious. And therefore, we always would look like uh, to have a simpler way of deciding such type of questions. So we wind up it here and see you there on Wednesday. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, sir. <coughs>